any th thoughts that we might have too, so we can get a feel for what they're suggesting. Okay. If you'd like me to do all that, right. all right. yeah. The the drafts that the charter commission has been working on, those are all public meetings and public documents. So I'm sure the draft, the current draft, red line could be shared with this okay. group. I don't yeah. If I did not. Um, I I went a, I went out and onto the website and I'm not sure if it was before it switched or not but there were there wasn't anything that I could find for minutes so if someone can just get you know the minutes to us that where there was a discussion of the personnel board um, if you can send that out then we can go from there and read and then if we need to contact them we can I couldn't find it on the internet and I don't know if that was when we were switching and so so do you want the minutes or do you want the red line um, I think the red line actually yeah okay I think that would be much more helpful than just the general minutes I would agree okay one one last thing I hesitate to get into this because it's you know difference between administration and our responsibility we had a lot of com a lot of controversy regarding the pit bull ordinance and a, a lot of people said well you know we don't have 24-hour coverage for animal control and I guess, you know, I've had some people say, well, you're on the personnel board, why don't you bring it up? Okay, so I will. Uh, where are we with regard to 24-hour coverage for animal control? Uh, I've got a lot of neighbors that walk their little dogs. Now, pit bulls are okay now. Uh, are we going to have complete coverage for animal control? Again, it's a personnel so, item, and I know it's a ministry. I don't. Item. Well, I disagree. It's not a personnel item. It's an operational question, not a personnel question. So, um, you know, we have another oversight board that uh, reviews animal shelter operations uh, on a routine basis, and then we have a board of health as well that reviewed the pit bull animal ordinance. So. Mm -hmm. Um, those items are addressed through through those groups and then it's an operational matter and correct me if I'm wrong I believe the Jackson County El An Jackson County Animal Welfare Board was disbanded is that correct and it is just now under the health department no they just haven't filled their positions okay so it sounds like that would be an item okay. to take up with them at their next meeting yep or to take up at a you know speak at a council meeting we'd like to sure. I have that same concern so we can look into that no, good. okay any other items and, and, and oh, one, one quick one quick easy item uh -huh. Zach Walker said he was going to introduce the new HR director and so maybe I don't know Adam may be going to do that I don't know I mean th tell us about her background oh. <laughs> How about I just let? <laughs> I don't know when Zach did that. Um, <laughs> I guess I got the memo. Yeah. Um, so actually, I'll just. Uh, I don't like speaking uh, on behalf of someone who's in the room. So how about I just let Jamie introduce herself? Sounds great to me. Oh, I don't like speaking about myself. So can we just? <laughs> uh, well, okay. Um, so I'm Jamie Walker. I've. Uh, been with the city now since uh, July 10th of uh, this year, and um, my background has been with human resources now for about 17 years. Um, I started um, in my education is actually in criminal justice. Um, my undergrad graduate degree is um, in criminal justice, and I have uh, I started with my first big girl job, I guess we'll say, <laughs> uh, as an investigator with Missouri Attorney General's office. Um, and uh, then I took a job with uh, actually the city of Grand Valley um, as a city clerk uh, with a little bit of the HR uh, work to do. And it actually turned out to be all HR with a little bit of city clerk work. <laughs> <laughs> and so got my feet wet over there um, and uh, created an HR department that really wasn't there. Um, so trial and fire. Um, and was with Grand Valley for almost six years and um, had quite a few bosses there. And, a little, got a little tired of city government and <laughs> moved into the private sector for a majority of the past few years. Um, worked for a mid-size uh, manufacturing company um, 
here in the metro and uh, then had the opportunity to work with a corporate organization for the last several years. Um, and it was a global organization um, that moved through that organization a little, a little quickly. Um, started off as um, a senior uh, human resource business partner with them um, with one of their uh, one of their business lines, uh, and it's it was a, a company called Epic, and what they do is legal service um, soup to nuts kind of thing. Um, and worked with one of their um, business lines and then was promoted at, to a director in a different business line um, where we supported um, about 1,600 full-time global employees and about 1,200 contract employees um, globally. We had uh, employees in India, Canada, Singapore, Japan, um, and we could go through quite a few countries. We had 89 countries. Wow. Um, <laughs> So we learned a lot about international contracts, learned a lot about um, temporary contracts, learned a lot about people in general. So um, we have a lot of experience in all of the different things, a lot of people operations experience, a lot of management experience, worked with a lot of the presidents and heads of the organization as well as um, midline and lower level employees. So um, just have a lot of experience in those areas, but have a lot to learn as well. Happy to be back in the public sector. Mm -hmm. um, had a lot of conversations about Adam and about the, the style of leadership that I enjoy, mm -hmm. um, and we pretty much aligned in those in that regard. Um, and um, just love the people that I work with here at the city. Enjoy all the things that I've done so far, and you haven't kicked me out yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's nice to have you. It's nice to have you. And I, I know you don't like to talk about yourself, but we do appreciate hearing it so that, you know, because we do feel comfortable we'll with you. we try not to drive you nuts. That's all right. <laughs> You've got a year that you, you, you haven't had us. It's like herding cats, you know, yeah. on leashes. Yeah. Huh? All right. Good. Very good. Anything else? Okay. I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. We uh, all reviewed their application, and uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, we did it, it, we did review, but we never called them in or sent them to the uh, next phase. That was before these two applicants here, but we did review their application and made a decision on uh, whether we would send them to the next phase of this appointment. And, and according to the minutes that were sent out yesterday, which is a great refresher because it's been a year, uh, we um, had the other applicants, Teresa and I, had also both put in to retain our positions, and the body voted, uh, yeah. the board voted to retain our positions. So we did not have to move forward with any outside new candidates. Uh, but since this is a, a, a vacant seat, I think, you know, uh, with no one to who wants to retain the seat, obviously, because Teresa's passed. Mm -hmm. I think it would be prudent to interview people, um, to have a brief interview with the people that we decide we feel are qualified. Okay. okay. All right. And then I believe, um, since, um, as Jennifer indicated, and Jennifer, we, or Jamie, sorry. <laughs> Jennifer's looking up and Jamie's looking at me like you're looking at me. My apologies, Jamie. Welcome um, to the city, first of all. Appreciate it. Uh, sorry that you weren't aware of some of our policies and procedures for the board, so um, that's okay. We we know, we know better and we will do better then. So um, so we are not going to take up any of the new business um, today past this um, because of the notification time frame. Um, so I am going to uh, move to a discussion of our next meeting date um, because that's our next important step to, to arrange. Um, I do have a question um, re with regards to the next meeting date. Um, there are several items obviously that are lots of changes here, big changes. Um, uh, I wanted to find out, as we discussed last year in September and August and that type of thing, that any changes um, that were going to be made were going to go to uh, the Labor Coalition first for um, just to kind of weed out some of, you know, to decrease our discussion times and things like that. So has, have you met with the Labor Coalition to discuss each of these items in depth? Mm -hmm. 
we've sent it to them. Okay. But in short order, we haven't had a conversation with them yet. That is something that Mike was trying to get uh, put together. Okay. Um, but I had a group back from the report okay. committee, so okay. that is not something we have done yet. Okay. So, since your name was invoked, sir, could I ask you um, when would be um, the next available time that we can meet, presumably on a Friday at 10, um, that you would have time to meet with them to discuss these policies and then for that to get turned around back to us? What suggested date would you have? I don't know that I can make a suggestion on the date. Right. All I can we'll do is say, state that. Director did send the <coughs> policies and procedures updates to the coalition. I forwarded it out to the coalition. Um, I'll have to meet with the coalition. Here. Here. Okay. Here, uh, you know, I think what I would suggest is rescheduling or scheduling a new meeting in three weeks. That maybe would give us enough time to at least have a preliminary meeting. Um, I think that's more than fair. Okay. All right. Coalition All right. Yes, so, yeah. So let's do that. Um, go, so we'll. So I'd ask for three weeks or three to four weeks. We do have some time sensitive items on that changes on the personnel manual. You know, we can between now and the next meeting, we can prioritize the items that that are, that are more sensitive yeah. than the others, and then um, uh, then maybe the, this this group could focus on those items, and then we can work on the others as we go along. That sounds good. So I would um, ask you to check your calendars uh, for Friday, October 27th at 10 a.m. in this building. I am available then and am good with that. Ron, I, I, you're good with that? I don't have a calendar with me, but I think that would be okay with okay. me. Yeah, I'll try to work that around. Okay. And Come for you, at least, yes. the, looks good? Okay. Does that work? All right, then. Um, our next uh, meeting will be scheduled. I'm, I'm sorry. No. Karen, I mm -hmm. cannot make that meeting. Oh, okay. I have a, a different meeting with okay. a different uh, vendor that we Yeah, fair enough. Well, how about November 3rd? Yeah. Okay, let's go to November 3rd. Yes, I'm available November 3rd at 10 p.m. 10 a.m. How's that for you? And actually, our next regularly scheduled meeting would be the 10th of November. So, so, so I'm trying to remember our process and what how much time it takes to uh, implement a change. Um, to the personnel manual. Um, I think there's a 10 day notice period, right? right? Yes. Um, yes, so it would be brought to, items would be brought to us for discussion until we have agreed that we're feeling comfortable to then move to a public hearing and then that requires 10 days notice um, and then have the public hearing and then vote. I can make the 27th. The 27th is better than the 3rd, so I can do that. You can do that? What, what date? October 27th. October oh, she's back to the 27th. Yeah. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> um, this will uh, this will allow an opportunity for all interested parties to have information. I you know I just really strongly believe that we need to involve the employees, the labor unions, and whatever. You know, I, I just think that, you know, if we work together, I don't know the contra how whether these items are controversial or not, but it's good to have everybody on board or at least have an opportunity to express their opinion. And, you know, cooperation is better than not cooperation. So that's that's my only feeling about it. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why we as a staff, the last time we talked about this, were the ones who okay. did suggest that process. So there's one item that has to be uh, implemented by January 1st, no later than January 1st. Okay. And, you know, I'll be as bold to say it really doesn't impact um, the Labor Coalition members. It's actually to... Um, accommodate uh, something that's in one of the work agreements that we committed to so it needs to be done before January 1st. Okay. Okay. I think we can make that happen if we continue on the schedule and by the time the, the 27th rolls around you guys will have had a chance to meet with them and kind of 
weed out some of that again as you indicated triaging you know what what do we absolutely have to get done first um, and then moving down the line okay there's no other discussion I'll entertain a motion well, to wait wait, oh. wait 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 about nine o'clock last night when I got the information from Jamie I returned a, m a memo to her following up on some issues that we talked about in prior meetings and so even though I mean it's under like a comment section and I'm assuming that that's okay to talk about as to the status of some prior things that we've talked about are we okay on that I mean that's that's probably a question for the chair not us I would, so I would these are your rules yeah I yeah, would be comfortable if there's some items that you would like to give us an update on well a, a couple of years ago I brought up the issue of a minimum wage of $15 and the answer to that request was we're going to do a wage study okay now, almost every city now has gone to the $15 an hour they're up to 18 and my follow-up question from a couple of years ago I guess it's been is where are we with regard to a minimum wage of $15 an hour for both union contract as well as non represented people do do we know so th this board the the focus and the direct you know what the charter says is your focus is on the personnel manual not our work agreements right the city manager's office and the city council negotiate those work agreements so we do that as those as those come up and we bargain wages and we do that in good faith with our with our labor groups um, you know by and large the non-represented positions um, aside from some temporary and part-time positions would would either fall into a labor agreement or they're non-represented and we have a pay plan for those so I'm well, you know, if you read the if you read the code, it's very questionable what our re what our responsibilities are, and it talks about anything to do with personnel administration. I don't have it in front of me the exact wording. It opens it up to just about anything having to do with personnel matters, and I'd hope maybe the Charter Commission could clarify that, and I. I think that they should, as as they pre, as they do their work, um, specifically indicate what the responsibilities. In this case, future personnel boards, um, what what they're all about, what what their what their responsibility would be, and so I think we can almost open it up to anything personnel related, if you read the code. And that's the reason I brought that up sure and I guess I would if we're going to refer to the Charter I would refer to the provisions in the Charter that talk about the role and duties of the city manager which all administrative functions fall under the authority of the city manager personnel contract administration being a couple of those items and I would agree with that as a person with a city management background that's exactly the way it ought to be but that's not how the 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 code spells out responsibility of the personnel board and so some of these issues uh, I think are germane if you consider what the code says okay so could I um, maybe offer this up could we um ask that uh, you give us some information on um, which I know it's in the pay plan um, if you could provide that information to us as to any classification of someone who is below $15 an hour so that we can look at that first to see how many situations do we have like that might, might get that conversation a little more guided yeah we will provide non-represented pay plan information yes okay. Would that help Ron and then we can yeah then we can take a look and see I just think we need to be 15 bucks an hour I mean you know McDonald's pays that mm -hmm. and city employees ought to be paid at least 15 bucks an hour probably 18 uh, with inflation the way it is so I, I just I, I just don't know <coughs> I don't know why this city you know why we're not doing that but that's you know 
Anyway. Well, and I think I think it is a good thing to look at it um, uh, because I know that the city is struggling to hire people in m multiple areas. So is that a factor that plays into that? Um, so let's um, ask that you provide that to us and then we can see how many positions we're talking about that are not at that amount and maybe get some feel for what because the next question is what is the total dollar amount that we would be looking at because that would be something they would need to consider for budget considerations in each of the various departments where those people work. Um, okay. So okay. I think if we ask for that information and we can get that then we can make that a starting point for that discussion. Are we going to have any input into what the, the, the charter says the responsibility of the personnel board is or is that just a foregone conclusion? I had spoken to Jamie a little bit about that as well just um, a week ago. Uh, I know when they first met, unfortunately when Teresa passed we didn't have a chair so they were probably didn't even know who to reach out to to have that discussion with. I presume they have moved past that part of the charter since it's closer to the front. Um, but I can make a point if you'd like for me to reach out to the chair of the Charter Review Commission to speak to Jackie to see what discussions they've had about the personnel board um, and where they're at with that and then if if she would entertain us discussing with that We should make a recommendation to them with regard to vacancies and so um, I don't know who I should call on uh, city manager or the new human resources director to lead us in that or our attorney uh, who would like to comment on filling a vacancy and the candidates we currently have. We, we've not practiced this at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we did get applications prior to. Yeah, yeah, and they sent us out to, to in this packet. Yeah. So we are just looking up again, sure. going over those rules. Sure. Because I know we talked, it's been so long since we've gotten back to um, those mm -hmm. new rules that we put in place with regards to how to fill that vacancy. Mm -hmm. um, there were two people that um, actually have maybe an interest in serving on this uh, board. I don't know them personally. Um, one is Bradley Mad. Mud. And the other one is Lucinda. I believe she goes by Cindy Troutman. Um, Bradley um, appears to have a little bit of experience in just being in uh, different organizations. Um, whereas uh, Cindy, it looks like she has some past HR experience. Um, and like I said, both are interested in serving, but did we find this? Um, so uh, the way this works is when a vacancy occurs, um, uh, the, the board then fills the vacancy by a majority vote. Okay. And so um, at this point, um, and I, I do have a question on that, um, if, if I remember correctly, and I didn't bring a copy of my charter. Um, so I believe we make a recommendation to the council because it is a, an, a council appointed position, but we make, we vote to make the recommendation, right? And then they take it up from there. That's exactly right. That's okay. exactly right. Yep. Um, the one thing that we don't have, um, so Teresa was our chairperson. Um, I don't know that, um, um, what, something that we'll need to figure out, I mean, as we're going through this process a little bit, was it appears that there, there are two-year terms, mm -hmm. so I don't know exactly when her term, and I don't know if Jamie has that. Oh. I will actually believe there are... Yeah, they're four-year terms. Or four yeah, they're four-year four terms, yeah. And I, I think maybe it might be helpful if I could offer that if we would go ahead to the if we could do the chair and vice chair approve appointments first okay. then we can maybe it will help to kind of run the m meeting too do you would you agree with that that's fine go ahead because I don't think let me just state I don't know that a new person would be someone we would consider for a chair position sure. you know type thing so I think amongst us if we wanted to do that mm -hmm. I would recommend we move to that and then maybe go back to that okay. if that would be all right would you agree Ron I'm, f I'm fine okay. with that yeah yeah if we want to 
we want to do that. So do we want to nominate chair and vice and chair? Vice chair? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there nominations? I'll I nominate Ron Adams. <laughs> 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 I nominate Ron Adams for the vice chair. I think is the position. Well, I was going to nominate. I was going <laughs> to nominate Laura for chair. Okay. But um, we could do it either way. I mean, if that's the case, um, you know, we we I guess we you know split it up. She would take the first year, and I'd take the second, assuming I'm going to stay on go to stay on for another term okay my, my term would end uh, in uh, july 1 of next year okay so i mean we we could do it either way we, we could share if that be the if, yeah well and i think you have a time too when you're going to be out with some uh, i'm going to have to have a surgery. Some knee surgery here coming up in december january so if you want to serve the first year and if I come back and yeah I'll be glad to serve starting July 1st of next year if, oh, if appointed. You? Yes I concur 100%. Okay. Should we, should, we, should we go ahead and I'm take sorry. I think we need we need to formalize this a little bit like okay so you nominated Carl you nominated. I nominated Ron Adams. Ron and me. Ron did you nominate someone? Well, I'm going to nominate uh, okay. Laura. Okay, so we need to kind of, again, to tighten this up a little bit, okay? Hmm. Um, and so I we have him for vice chair. Okay, and so you nom so <laughs> <laughs> you nominated twice. So let's start with chair, and then we'll no. move to vice chair, okay. Okay? okay? So I think we need to have a vote on yes. the chair between, so we, go ahead. do you want me to do that, or someone else going to do the go roll ahead. call here? Go ahead. Okay, so... Chair, uh, for those in favor of Ron as chair, um, say aye. Aye. Okay. You got to vote too. It's three of us. Okay. I would. I know, but I'm I not in favor. Of him. I would nominate <laughs> Laura. So, so we need to vote on you as oh. chair, and then we'll vote on Laura as oh, chair, okay. and then we'll then we'll then we'll proceed to the vice chair. Is that am I making sense? That's fine. Okay. Good. So, again. For Ron Adams for chair, say aye. aye. All right, and you're not okay. Now for Laura as chair, say aye. 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 Okay, so that so that passes Laura's chair. So now we need nominations for vice chair. I nominate Ron for vice chair. Any further nominations? The right. smaller the group, the harder we fall. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We get to read All right. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We got through that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Are you going to preside or am I? Is that all right then? Am I going to preside to, or you? Is it all right if I move forward now? Is that a, as the chair? Go ahead. Okay. Go all ahead. Right. I'll let you talk. Okay. Okay. So basically, I think the, the the like we said, the item on the agenda that we need to take up is the consideration of the vacancy that Teresa has left. Um, big shoes to fill. Um, so we have two uh, applications that we received in our board packet. Um, as Jennifer indicated, um, Brad Mudd uh, is from what I can read doesn't have as much HR experience he has board experience and things like that um, Cindy the other uh, candidate or Cynthia maybe uh, whichever is Cindy, behind Cindy. Cindy. okay yeah. very good just so I'm not calling someone right. by their yeah. uh, non preferred name um, Cindy um, has several decades of experience in HR uh, personally I would recommend that um, this board is a very specific um, set of we have a specific thing that we talk about, which is HR policy. So um, I feel much comfortable get it much more comfortable having someone who has HR experience who can bring that to us. Um, so I personally would like to um, suggest myself. I would like to suggest that we interview um, Cindy because she does have the experience. Um, if we, however, feel we would like to interview both of them, we can most certainly do that. What would the body feel? comfortable with Go ahead. I feel comfortable with your suggestion or uh, yeah what you are uh, suggest I, I are you 
Yes. Oh, okay. Um, I feel it's it's very much like interviewing a candidate for a job. You look at the resume, you see if they meet the minimum qualifications, you see if they have the appropriate experience, and you just don't interview everybody. When a person fills out an application, they have an opportunity to sell themselves on their application with any supporting documentation, and it's sort of a marketing campaign. They market themselves. Employees in the city service would be very much the same way. They would put all their experience out there. And I don't know either one of these people, but I tend to agree with what Laura said, that we ought to interview those who appear to have the most qualifications. And we had Teresa, she was a professional personnel person. And I just think that that's extremely important, that, that we're talking about things that affect employees. And all of us who have been in human resources have an obligation to the staff of the city to do the right thing for our fellow employees or, or the staff mm -hmm. or, or employees. And so we need to have good people who are able to hear decision, or do decisions uh, on re, uh, rules and regulations, and those people who choose to appeal to the board for suspension, demotion, uh, uh, discharge, they need to have people who are qualified to try to make a decision. So I concur <coughs> with what she has said, if she feels this person is good. That's not to say we can't go out and look for more candidates. And I don't know the process of recruiting. Um, if you're looking for firefighters or police officers, you may want to find a police officer or firefighter with another jurisdiction. That's super, mm -hmm. you know, to get a good qualified person. So I won't belabor that anymore, but that's my feeling. And my understanding, um, and Correct me if I'm wrong, I have not seen the personnel board opening on the boards and commissions report that comes out once a month in a study session. Um, so it, m what may be helpful is, is that we ask uh, the city council to put on their agenda uh, with that boards and commissions report to add that open seat. And I think it's not there because it is, let me turn this off before it rings, I apologize. Um, I think it has not been on there because it is, it is, you know, like we, it starts with us and then we go to them. But maybe having that on the boards and commissions report would bring that to the attention. Um, and when um, our new city clerk announces those board position openings, then people who are paying attention might hear that. And then I think, uh, and that require, when would that next be able to go on an agenda? Today, two weeks from yesterday. <laughs> I get really confused on studies, the notice on the agendas. November 6th. November 6th, okay. Um, so I think um, I'd like to just be able to do this formally and make a motion that we uh, ask the city council to uh, put in the boards and commissions report the open seat for the personnel board at the next available study session um, and have them read that as an open seat so that we can maybe get some further applicants. Uh, and. Okay, I'll leave that motion there. Sorry, yeah. November 6th is the next city council meeting. Right. If you were moving that applicant forward, the next study session would be um, the, 13th. the 13th. Okay, yeah. So, a motion on the table to ask the city council to take, uh, to mention this with the boards and commissions report on the November 13th during the study session. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Okay. So then, once we collect um, anything, we'll have our next. When we have our next meeting, we'll have. We'll talk about anyone else and the two that we have. Does that sound reasonable? Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Very good. Um, and as okay. yes. I'm sorry. What, what, once we have those candidates, mm -hmm. then are we going to go through the interview process? Is that? I think that is prudent. 
Okay. All right. Would you agree that that's prudent to interview them and? Yeah. Yeah. I, that was the. Uh, uh, I think prior to, we was in a meeting and we had some applicants uh, and we